10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Hello. We're talking about language policy on Q&A tonight. But instead of trying to cover the whole debate, let's focus on language and tertiary education, universities, technicons, colleagues, colleges, I mean. Our format on Q&A, of course, is a non-expert panel of public personalities interacting with a team of experts and interested parties. Let me introduce you to our panel tonight. Connie September is the second vice president of Kusatu. Rolf Meyer is the secretary general of the National Party and we promised him that we're not going to ask him about the present infighting in his party tonight. <laughs> Don Makobo is a former executive director of ESCOM and now a human resources consultant. Welcome also to our team of interested parties where most of the discussion is generated. My first question to you, Connie September. What do you think? Should Stellenbosch University be exclusively Afrikaans and the University of Zululand be exclusively Zulu? Max, my immediate answer obviously would be no. Um, that it shouldn't be exclusively for those two languages. And why my immediate answer would be no is to say that we must accept the diversity that we have in this country. And we must accept that if you take the allocation of Stellenbosch and you take the allocation of Zululand, then it would be incorrect to say that there are only one particular group of um, uh, uh, whatever kind of language that are staying around that place or even other people that are actually interested to come to that place. I know, for example, of a person from Johannesburg who's an English-speaking uh, student who's applied to Stellenbosch. It's Afrikaans, however, she has applied with hope that she can actually get in uh, to Stellenbosch and she wants to go there. That's her, that's her aim. So should we deny her? I think we shouldn't deny her. She has chosen she wanted to come to Stellenbosch. So we should have languages at different universities. We should have University of Venda, should be Venda, um, and so on, so people can have a choice. That's but not what I'm saying, Max. What I'm saying is that we must accept that we obviously have a number of um, languages in this country. That doesn't mean that you take into your institutions, I would say, 11 languages. I think we must accept that's impractical. What I'm basically arguing is that we must make these institutions in such a way that it can cater for the fact that people feel free, they can actually go there, that they are not being stopped, they're not being hampered by all sorts of things, and in particular language to, to, to enter into some of the, you know, that you're talking about university, but I think you know very well that we are sitting with that problem at some of our, our, our high schools, at some of our primary schools, where a lot of our kids can't actually go to some of these uh, schools simply because sometimes they can't speak Afrikaans, sometimes they can't speak uh, mm. English, um, and, and It's and slightly it different to a topic, though, because there's some kind of constitutional protection for mother tongue mm -hmm. education. But let's uh, ask uh, Fritz Koch. Do you believe that there is still room for universities in mother tongue? Don't we live in an English language world? It's very important that we should have the right, right of choice. You know, it's a uh, sort of a popular political thing today to say multilingualism is nonsense. It's going to cost us a lot. But for South Africa in the future, it's very important that that right to be educated in a certain language is a given. Not to exclude people, but to develop the full potential of all the people in South Africa. You know, it's very interesting that if one talks today it's always one language against ten. And I think in this discussion we shouldn't just focus on one. We should focus on the other ten. If you go to other countries, take Japan for example. Japan used English to gain access to the outer world, to science and technology. But they used Japanese to inform their own people about that. So where we go to a university, we should use the language which is preferred by the students there, and that is to develop the human resources which we have. All right. Prof. Mayer, your, your thoughts on this topic? I would, to a great extent, uh, agree with what Fritz has, has just said. I think it's, it's probably true, and of course that is what the Constitution also provides for. If one looks back at, at the Constitution, both the interim Constitution and now our <coughs> new Constitution, 
I think one of the biggest achievements for South Africa was the fact that we recognized all 11 official languages in that constitution, because surely through that, by doing so, we have given not only recognition, but also protected all 11 languages. And if it wasn't for that, then we might have ended up with only one language to the detriment of all the other African languages, including Afrikaans, of course. Don't could, I, could I just ask yes. and get a bit of clarification? Uh, I'm Eddie Price from WITS. I thought the question was whether a non-Afrikaans-speaking person could go to Stellenbosch, and in that case, would they have the right to expect their own language to be catered for at Stellenbosch? Or have we... Well, that's well, part of the question. That's yeah. part of the question. What is your response to that question? Well, I think it would be totally inefficient. I think every university can have a language. We can have 11 languages at the universities in the various centres, mm. but I don't think we can have every student at every university expecting tuition in his or her own mother tongue or even... And that is the crux of the matter. That's where the problem lies that we're mm. discussing tonight. Is If you have a right to go to any university of your choice, then certainly you have the right to speak your language there, and that makes it impossible. Don McCorbo, what, what do you think? Do you think people have a right to go to any university and then insist that they speak their own language? Max, I think we're living in a very sort of complicated reality. I think my view, quite frankly, would be much as that would have been an ideal situation one would have wanted to foster, bearing in mind the fact that we are now trying to make up for a past that didn't permit and didn't give equal rights to all the languages, and we're now trying to say, how fast and how quickly is it, can this country afford the luxury of letting us go back so that all of us can have the luxury of, of learning in the various languages that we have? I believe what we have to do now is prioritize the sorts of issues that this country needs for us to address right now. <coughs> and I believe if one looks from a business, business perspective, if one looks at the sorts of interventions that we as South Africans in the first instance have to identify as one unit, as the South Africans speaking a, a whole range of languages, speaking 11 languages, what we have to say is what are the things that we have to do now in order for us to, to, to pursue the interests of the country in the first instance. And I believe it's important that we begin to start developing an us, an Afri a South Africanism, and that the, the bonding language for us would be English. Because how do we communicate what all of us want if we're still going to be caught in trying to foster using our own various languages in the various in learning institutions. I think that would be the first thing. And by saying so, I'm not saying it's not important that we should not maintain uh, our own cultural identities. I certainly believe it's important for us to do so. But when we can't do everything at the same time. And I but think but it's isn't, isn't the point that uh, you develop your own home language and your own ethnic identity in your younger years because then it will remain with you. And once you're through secondary education, you don't need to be further stimulated on it. Then you have it. And then when you go through I, tertiary I, I education, Max, uh, let me ask uh, Professor Yohanda uh, Yes, uh, uh, whilst uh, this is ideal, I think it is uh, at the moment not yet uh, practical because first of all, if you say now people should be taught in their own or various uh, mother tongues, the professors or lecturers will have a problem because how many of them know more than say three languages in this country? Maybe if it were blacks, having to face that problem would have a different setup because every black man speaks an average of five to six languages. But I don't think it is the case with the other people who either speak Afrikaans or English. Max, uh, Sorry. Let's, let's just catch the, 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 the lone lady at the back. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm Katie from the Penn South African Language Board, though I must say I'm not specifically representing the board. I don't have that mandate. But I would like to take issue with Don and actually Professor um, Linake. I, I, I think we, we seem to having a roundabout way of, of, of developing language or be, making use of our languages as a resource. I believe language should uh, develop through use. You can't say we'll put it at a certain laboratory until such time that it's mature. Can we then make use of it at, at various disciplines and at tertiary level? But also what I want to take issue with Don is that what is feasible 